Well, good day, good day, good day. Hey, it's good to see y'all again. Uh, I've been kind of out of commission. Uh, but I haven't been out the past couple of days. Uh, but then I decided today to get out a little bit. I got to turn my floodlights off. I haven't been on all this time. Uh, but while I was in the house, I was, uh, I was invaded and overtaken. Yeah. 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 Yeah, the government came in. <laughs> Just moved right on in, mama. Just moved right on in. You know, they hadn't made no demands or nothing yet. So, <laughs> uh, well, I hope everybody's doing well. I know a few of you I've seen on the Eddie family farm last night on their live. I know you're still there. Hi. How about? Dang, I walked across the yard and wore out. Got to get a few things done. Well, for one, I've got some, my pharmacy mailed me some stuff. It's according to my email, it's down in the mailbox. So I got to ease down there and get that. So uh, let me get that done, and then I'll jump back on here with you. You've seen me get the mail so many times. I know you don't want to see it again. Okay, it won't be long. Well, I'm running the military out of here. <laughs> oh. okay. Nothing like this old army stuff. Uh, I wish I'm up there, but I ain't not me today. This thing uses so much fuel, you have to carry spare fuel cans. <laughs> and I guess it's known to catch on fire, so you better have a fire extinguisher. Tell you one thing this thing is loud the stove pipe is right there <sighs> yeah two people have to scream at each other <laughs> right down the road some battery issues and they're not old batteries so. uh, somebody was messing with it and, you know, setting setting up at the store somebody left some switches on in it and run the batteries down and shish kebab uh. 
We well, got it on deep cycle. I'll let it run. Well, just like the email said, my medicine was in the box. But I'll tell you what, two little bottles of medicine in there. And look at that great big bag. I mean, really? <laughs> uh, still got my board here for my underpinning. Waiting for me to get to work. But I ain't got to it yet. I got something else to talk about. But uh, I'm going to wait till I get in the house and sit down. Something is bothering me. Something is, it's, it's personal, but it's something that goes on all over this world. And something that happens that shouldn't happen. And uh, I got to, I need to water the peppers. I just, uh, I'm just, um, I guess you could say, uh, struggling with it in my, in my head, uh, my heart. So I'll, I'll talk to you about it in a minute. Let me water these peppers and I'll go in and sit down and talk to you. Okay. Like I said, this is kind of personal. Uh, and I'll go ahead and give you a trigger warning. But, uh, I just want to know what you think about it and how you feel about it. Uh, or about how I feel. Uh, I'm not trying to justify how I feel. Not at all. But uh, my sister passed away in 2020. Uh she was, she never had no children of her own. Uh, that was my sister. That's when she passed away right there. I don't know if you want to capture it or whatever. Uh, but she had, uh, like I said, she didn't have no children of her own. Uh, she was my baby sister. I'm the oldest. Uh, she was married for 31 years. And she did foster care. Not all 31 years, just uh, uh, quite a few years uh, before she passed away, a number of years. Uh, but it said that uh, she had a the rough estimate was 170 children had come through her home in foster care some were overnighters some were for the weekend some were for weeks some were for months some were for years and over the years she adopted some of these children that she was able to. She adopted 10 of them. Now, uh, after she passed away, I spent a quite a bit of time up in Virginia uh, with uh, her husband and uh, the kids. Everything seemed to be good overall. There was, of course, there was problems. It was a time when kids were not going to school and they were doing it at home and all that kind of stuff had to be dealt with. And uh, th th things got, things, uh, 
things went along. You know, it was all a rough time for everybody in the world, I think, during 2020. But uh, I was back up there in part of uh, 2021. I came actually came home and went back again. Uh, but in the uh, past months, some alarming things have happened. Now, I don't recognize my sister's husband as my brother-in-law any longer. He is my ex-brother-in-law. The last thing I ever expected was this man. That's his mugshot. I can't remember. 61 or 62 years old. Younger than me. And, but still in his 60s. Uh, decided he was going to molest children. Uh Red flags went up because of how they acted, how he acted, and how he had them to act, and how he had brainwashing them. Uh, one of them is 14 years old. There's eight kids now, eight kids at home. He's got eight kids there. Uh, is that right? I think that's right, yeah. Uh, he got a 14-year-old pregnant and his uh, oldest who was still living at home uh, never encouraged to go out and go to work. She was a minor when my sister passed away but in this past year he got her pregnant also. Now, he's in jail and has been since sometime in September, I think. August, maybe August, I can't remember. A uh, few months now. Uh, his next court date is in December. I know this will probably go on um, uh, for quite a while, and I've been putting it off thinking of what to say because I want to call the prosecuting attorney. I don't think he should be given any kind of benefits, you know, adjustments. He's got 19 accounts against him right now. 19. And, uh, you know, I feel for these kids. I know they, they've they they've been brainwashed to go on with everyday life. But uh, here a few weeks ago, about three weeks ago now, I talked to a lady 37, 38 years old who was molested by her family uh, when she was a kid and a babysitter. And she's 38 now. And she's still cries when she talks about it. The impact of it all stays, has stayed with her all this time. It took her a number of years before she finally spoke up because, you know, you'll get taken away uh, and all kinds of crazy stuff that they use to manip manipulate a child's mind. But she, 38 years old, she's still living with it. So I think the perpetrator should still be living with this consequences of being in prison. You know, if she's got to live with it for life, they should have to live with it for life. The way I see it. And I want to, I'd like to, I hope, and would like to be there at the time of his sentencing, which might is a long ways off, I'm sure. Uh, I'd like to make an impact statement because the impact of it has affected me. 
nowhere near as much as the kids, don't get me wrong, but the anger that I carried with him, I, I have with him. Uh, I, I'm not one that prays for myself very often, but over the past month or two, I pray for myself more than I've ever prayed for anybody, I think, because I feel it. I feel the anger. I feel the kid's pain. And uh, the thoughts of what I would do if I could get my hands on him are not thoughts that I've had uh, since I was a kid. Uh, and I prayed for the Lord for me to find a way to forgive him, but still say he needs to be punished. Having a hard time with it. Am I wrong? With the feelings that I have? I feel like I am. And that's, that's what's tearing me up. And if it's affected me like this, what he has done to these kids, what he has done, in my opinion, to my sister's name and uh, uh, memories of, you know, what she had accomplished. She took these kids that were sexually abused, mentally abused, uh, kids that, you know, that just had drug addict families and everything else, and give them a home and give them love. And he just made it, he just, when he got in charge, he just made it worse. Now he never gave no, you know, you know all I ever heard from him talking to him was, I love my wife and I loved her and uh, I wanted, I just want to do the right thing and I, I just want to raise these kids and get them off on, onto a good life and, yeah, yeah. I hoped and prayed that was true. Unfortunately, it wasn't. But the way I feel, I mean, I, that's what I want to, that's what I'm, I'm telling you this so that you understand. Uh, it makes my chest tight to talk about this. It angers me. Am I wrong for feeling the way I do towards him? For wanting to get my hands on him? What do you think? How would you feel? How would you deal with it? Because I'm having a hard time with it. Uh, and it's something I really didn't need in my life. And they definitely didn't need in their life. I just don't, I just don't get it. These were kids. You know? There's prostitute houses I'm up, up there where they live at. I mean, there's girls on the street. Not that I'm a condoning that neither. But Lord have mercy. Much better than destroying a child's life. At least them girls working the streets are out there, grown women, doing what they think they need to do or want to do. And I feel sorry for them too, but these are children. I just, uh, my sister was uh, 56 years old. When she passed away in 2020. And uh, I 
I miss calling her today. We never missed a, our birthdays. We said our birthdays was on the same day, and just minutes apart. But in years, of course, no, the difference in our years. Uh, but she was born on my birthday. I remember getting a phone call at my grandma's house. Uh, my mom said, come here, you got a phone call. I went in there and she goes, well, I want to tell you what your birthday present is. You got a little sister. And growing up, if you mess with my little sister, you mess with your life. And she used to tell people, I'll go get my brother. I don't have a good, I didn't have a good reputation as a young man. Uh, I wasn't, it wasn't, it wasn't, I wasn't, it just wasn't good. I'll tell you my own personal story another time, but what I want to do right now, I want to cut this short. Uh, I want to try to get out and do at least one thing today <clears throat> before I become unable to do anything else today. But uh, how would you put something like this behind you? In your mind? In your thoughts? I'm just curious. You don't have to tell me he's a low life. You don't have to get on there and tell me, you know, anything about him. I already know what he is. But how would you deal with it yourself if, it, if you were in my shoes? How would you deal with this? In your thoughts, how you, how you would... How would you find a way to accept this? I don't want them to throw the book at him. I want them to throw the whole courthouse at him. I want him to, if he ever does get out of prison or goes to prison, I want him to be so old that every part of his body will be limp and never be able to stand again. You know what I'm saying? Ever part. Push him out. Push him out on a gurney because he can't even sit up in a wheelchair. He deserves it. I'm sorry for the way I feel. I, I tell the Lord... I can't help me get past this. I just have it. And this ain't about me. This is about the impact on these children and the future of their lives. That they've got to live with it. This lady I was telling you about that was 37 or 38 years old. Went to counseling. She's had, you know, no doors have been closed to her as far as how it's impacted her on ways of getting on with life. And she does, but it's still in her mind and it's still something that, like I said, when she talks about it, it tears her up to talk about. It. And I think about all these kids and the impact in their future and their life. Because, yeah, they're going to have therapy they're going to have people talk to them. Tell them how to get on with life. But it's still going to be there. They're still going to know. Especially the two that's had children. I pray they love them and they get through this with them. But. I don't know. I'm going to end it right there. I'm going to put this video out. I want to show you what the, I've done showed you the uh, military truck and how I've been invaded. And uh, I need your opinion. And that's what I'm going to 
That's what I'm gonna put up there. I'm gonna also put up there, it's trigger warning. Uh, I had enough on my plate already with my own personal health and everything else. This, this isn't worrying me. This has hurt me. So don't get don't get confused. I I'm not worried about it. Everybody's safe. But uh I'm hurt. Does anybody know what I'm talking about? Has it happened to you and how did you how do you deal with it? I just need some good advice. But in spite of it all, I won't let it take away my smile. I won't let it uh, stop me from trusting people and being good to people. I won't let it affect my personal life as far as uh, meeting people and all that and wondering about them. I know I see this on uh, TV. Uh, I watch a lot of court cases and I see a lot of this kind of stuff and it's just heartbreaking. And I don't even know them to watch it on TV. But, uh, you know, so if you want to make a, if you want to give me your opinion on how you would handle this yourself, uh, uh, that's great. Like I said, you don't have to tell me what you think of him or that kind of person because I already know. Okay. God bless. And uh, I want to get out and try to do a little something in the yard. Why my feet will let me stand up. <laughs> but uh, keep on smiling. And remember, Jesus loves you.